and we're going to bring you a tutorial on how to make hatchling enclosures for your crested gecko. Uh, these enclosures are going to be stackable, they're going to be relatively inexpensive, uh, under $5, and they're fairly easy to make, so let's get on with the video. Okay, so you've done your research, you've hatched out your first gecko, and now you need a, to be able to make an enclosure for them to live in. So your first step is you want to start with a Sterilite, uh, a Sterilite plastic shoe box and these can be found at Target or Staples and they're relatively inexpensive. Um, they should be labeled 6 quart. You can see here that it's labeled a 6 quart plastic shoe box. And what I did is I took a, a soldering iron and I made sure that I was outside and there was good ventilation and I burned holes. Uh, I burned two rows of holes all the way around the perimeter of the top of this uh, plastic shoe box here um, in order to ensure that there's good enough ventilation for your gecko so that it doesn't get too humid in there um, and so that there's air for your gecko to breathe. Uh, so with the soldering iron you can get it on Amazon or uh, at hardware stores uh, but just make sure that you're using it outside because it does cause a lot of fumes that can um, that can be very detrimental to your health. So you don't want to be doing that in, in a confined space. Um, another way, if you don't want to use a soldering iron, you could just use a drill and drill holes across this, the perimeter. But I find the soldering iron easier because um, drills sometimes crack the plastic and that can result in, um, in messing up your enclosure um, and opening up uh, sharp or unwanted cracks in the plastic. So once you've burned your holes all the way around, you want to make sure you clean your plastic shoe box really, really well with soap and water and then rinse it thoroughly. Um, and then your next step is to put in a substrate. So for hatchling crested geckos, we just use a single piece of paper towel and we fold it a little bit just so that it fits in the bottom of this uh, enclosure here. And what we'll do is we will place the paper towel in the bottom like so. And we do this, uh, we use paper towel as opposed to cocoa fiber for hatchlings because uh, hatchlings tend to ingest cocoa fiber or other forms of substrate and that could cause impaction or other uh, health impacts on your crested gecko. So typically you wanna be using paper towel until uh, approximately 10 grams of weight. Um, and then you can feel free to switch your substrate. Also, paper towel is really easy to clean and replace. All you have to do is uh, take it out and put it in a new paper towel, uh, maybe spot clean the walls of the enclosure, and you're good to go. Okay, so our next step is gonna be to put in some hides and some fake foliage into your crested gecko's enclosure so that it has ample space to hide uh, to reduce stress levels. So for hashling crested geckos, you really don't need a whole ton in your enclosure. All you need is a few key things to keep your crested gecko happy and healthy. So what we like to use is, uh, I have bamboo that grows outside of my house, so I just take snippets of bamboo and I'll wrap fake foliage around it. Um, and I will lay this diagonally across the, uh, across the diagonal of my enclosure, like so. Um, just like this. Uh, that way your crested gecko can climb on the sticks and can, and can hide in the leaves and uh, feel secure in his little enclosure. Uh, our second uh, necessary piece of uh, decoration in your crested gecko's enclosure is going to be some form of shed rock. So what I do is I just take a rock from my backyard. Um, I like to get rocks that have flat bottoms, that way they don't roll uh, and don't have any potential to crush your crested gecko because that is the last thing you want happening. So I just get a flat rock, uh, a flat rock from my backyard and I'll clean it uh, with soap and water again. And you gotta be sure that you really sterilize it well uh, because there's all kinds of, uh, there's all kinds of bacteria and other microbial forms that grow outside. Um, and you're just gonna clean it really well and you're gonna dry it and you're gonna just stick it in the corner of your enclosure like so. Okay, so your rock, your shed rock is gonna be necessary in order for your gecko to shed properly because at times young crested geckos can struggle to 
get off all the skin and if there's any stuck skin after a shed, uh, this can result in the loss of blood circulation which could then uh, spiral into potential loss of a finger or a limb and, or most commonly a tail. Uh, and whatever it is, you don't want any loss of circulation in your gecko. So just make sure you have a rock for your crested gecko to uh, rub on or just some kind of abrasive surface that can help it shed uh, when it needs to. Um, then your next step is you're going to need food and water dishes. And considering that crested geckos really don't eat or drink all that much, all you're going to need for your food dish is a plastic water bottle cap like this one. Um, and you can fill this with food uh, three times a week and just place it in your crested gecko enclosure like so. And don't be alarmed if you don't see uh, empty food dishes every night. Uh, crested geckos really do not eat very much at all. So the only way you're going to know if your crested gecko is eating is one, if it spills food all over the place, which is also very common, or two, if you see poop around its enclosure. If you know that it's pooping, then you know that it's eating. So that's what we recommend to people who come to us in a panic because they think that their crested gecko isn't eating. So just make sure that you provide it with fresh food three times a week. We outline feeding, uh, feeding instructions on our website, baygecko.com. So uh, to, you can look there to get more in-depth knowledge about uh, how to feed your crested gecko. Uh, and then you're gonna need a water dish because although crested geckos will get most of their moisture licking water off of the sides of the side walls of their enclosure, they're still gonna need a constant water source in there um, in between spraying times for them to get water whenever they please. So for water dishes, we use a slightly bigger dish. Um, I just use a sports bottle cap for uh, hashling crested geckos and I'll just fill that with water and place it right next to the food dish in the enclosure um, and this is pretty much all you're gonna need for your crested geckos uh, hatchling enclosure and this enclosure should last until your gecko is about 8 to 10 grams uh, at which point you should definitely switch to a larger enclosure but this is pretty much everything you need um, in terms of uh, taking care of your crested gecko uh, until it reaches about 8 grams of weight. So now we're going to move on to the most exciting part, which is putting your crested gecko into its enclosure. So here's a little hatchling we got the other day out of Big Red and Scarlet, uh, one of our phantom red pairings. And this little guy's a phantom red phantom pinstripe with some good white highlighting. So we're going to go ahead and introduce him to his new enclosure. So this is always my favorite part of uh, constructing a hatchling enclosure, is getting to put the actual hatchling in the enclosure. So let's see if he wants to go in there. And our first step is going to be to spray it, give it a good little spray so that there's lots of moisture on the side of his enclosure. this video this has been a tutorial on how to make a hatchling enclosure for your crested gecko uh, we appreciate you guys following our videos and uh, I'm gonna ask you guys to please like and subscribe below and keep a heads up for more videos from Bay Gecko uh, thanks and I'll see you guys later